Before we begin this video, I would like to reiterate that if you don't believe in and support the Black Lives Matter movement, you are very, very wrong and very, very misled. For all you racist assholes who still want to scream all lives matter in my comment section, I have one fucking message for you folks. The fuck are you on my page for? Get the fuck off my page. Hey guys, hope you've had an amazing week so far. I'm kind of sad that it's not June June Hannah, but I understand why they brought Bugsy back. It's going to be drama, it's going to be ratings, it's going to be viewers tuning in to see the explosion that might happen. I get it, I get it. I want to know what everyone's thinking about Bugsy coming back. I see on Twitter and stuff that there's like half and half. Like half people are like, oh yay, Bugsy back. And then the other half is like, oh God, Bugsy's back. So like, what what side do you guys fall on? Let me know. Captain Sandy. Kiko on his first day did Brazilian cuisine. It was incredible. This is muqueca, which is a Brazilian dish. But a chef on a super yacht needs to be good at all cuisines. Muqueca. Mm. Kiko reminds me of a young Adam when we first worked together. He was very eager, but he wasn't used to super yachts. All I serve is soup and salad and soup and salad and soup and salad. I'm going to drown in the next soup I serve out of boredom. He had a learning curve. I agree with Sandy. I think he really needs to diversify his menus that he offers and not just cook Brazilian food, which is his comfort zone. And we understand it's his comfort zone, but like you need to branch out because not all guests are going to like Brazilian food. I'm praying to the weather gods. It's their last day of charter, and I really want them to play on the toys. I really want to make this happen for them. I mean, one thing you can say about Captain Sandy is she really does put the guest experience first over everything, which can be great and also not so great sometimes, if you know what I mean. Docking in big swells, it's pretty dangerous, but Malia did an amazing job calling it. She is a great leader already. I have to agree with Captain Sandy. I think Malia is doing a marvelous job at being bosun, and I think it'll only get better and better. Chef Kiko? This is gonna be my first picnic on a boat. All the private boats that I work for, they don't ask for a picnic. It's asparagus, bacon, quiche, and fruits. In Brazil, we don't do picnics. We just go in a bar. <laughs> Kiko is so cute and like charming, but at the same time, very, very clueless. I feel great already because everything we made for them, they like it already. Yeah! Hannah's helping me with timing and I feel like I'm getting better. I can't wait to finish this charger and perfect. It's gonna be a hundred percent. It's really nice to see Hannah helping Kiko with his timing and them actually get along instead of what kind of mostly happens is the chief stew and the chef kind of butt heads. But I don't see them butting heads this year. I think she's really gonna help him. Crazy. I finally got my time perfect and now the guests Make me wait. And that's why yacht chefs have to be versatile and just swing with it and go with the flow. But I don't know if Kiko is really that yachty of a guy. I don't know. I think he's more of a private chef kind of guy. Pete is this kind of guy, no? I think he tries to exist with any girl. I call Pete a tarado. <laughs> me a horny guy. Kiko's observations of the different crew members from episode to episode is quite amusing. Chief Stew, Hannah. I think I was blinded on Charter One because at least she wasn't spitting venom at me. I'm okay. I still sleep well at night. Now I'm realizing that she's just not very good, is she? At this point, I think Bravo's fucking with Hannah and just throwing her every single curveball they possibly can to get her to quit. And I guess it succeeded because she quit to have a baby. So go Bravo. I don't know. Having kids on board, it's basically mother training. You're gonna help me load the fridge? I love kids. There's so many like amazing, gorgeous moments. <laughs> but at the same time, they're really dirty. Putting your sticky little paws everywhere and 
Clean up my whole interior. Please wash your child. I think the whole little interview is really funny now considering she's five months pregnant and she's going to have her own little fingers fucking up her own interior in her house. So I don't know. That's funny. I think that was really good at editing on Bravo's part. His ego might be a little inflated for the level of stardom he reached. And that was saying it very, very, very politely. Second Stu, Bugsy. Having Bugsy back as Second Stu is going to be interesting. The last time that Hannah and Bugsy were together, let's just say it was not good. Uh, Bugsy basically told Hannah what a shitty Chief Stu she was and how basically she could do it better. So let's see how this is going to go. Third Stu, Jessica. For f sake, I'm working two people's jobs right now. I know that it's really hectic, hun, but I'm, I give you breaks before I give myself breaks, okay? Give me a f***ing break. I have to sympathize with Hannah here. You guys are down a stew and you're bitching about doing double work. Hannah is doing the most work of all because she's just giving you the easy things to do. You would think that you would want to be nicer to her and help her more considering... Y'all need to work together to get the shit done faster, but you want to bitch and moan about it? Why? I need another Sue to come quick because I'm not going to last, especially because I've been avoiding laundry my whole yachting career. Like, my old boat, I had this idea to make it eco-friendly. Like, the hotels where it's like, hang your towel if you don't need it washed again. <laughs> My mom calls me lazy. I think I'm smart. <laughs> Why does Bravo hire stews without any initiative to do the job that they're paid to do and not bitch about it? I just don't understand. Please explain this to me. My nickname as a kid was Messy Jesse, so I think pieces of that still live in me. <laughs> You're over the age of 20. That's not cute anymore, especially when it affects your job and your performance. I don't understand. Bravo really must hate Hannah. It's nice to have a guy that isn't staring at my tits and is instead trying to get in my mind. I guess if you say so, girl. I'm trying not to have too much expectations. I'm like excited and very nervous. Haven't these people watched the show before? It's always fun at first, gets awkward, then it gets real awkward, and then y'all leave. That's it. Bosin Malia. The cathedral is the landmark here in Palma. It's so beautiful. Up there, look at this yeah. castle. I'm praying the weather holds off. Picnics are always so much work, and hopefully it's not for nothing. We all have to admit, that scenery that they are in right now is freaking gorgeous. I'm not at all a church-going kind of gal, but that church is still gorge. I love kids, but I... I'm not, not there. Tom and I spend a lot of time apart working on yachts, but the time that we do get to spend together, I like traveling way too much and just not my thing now. I'm not at all shocked if that is her personality type, especially in the yachting industry. I think you would kind of have to have that feeling about children to be in the yachting industry. Um, I kind of thought it was weird that Byron on Sailing Yacht had a small child and a wife and was still doing this shit right now. But, like, I don't know. I think Malia is trying to do a right where, like, she'd get it all out of her system and have kids later. That's the way I would do it anyway. The wind is blowing us exactly where we do not want to be. Oh, we're really close, huh? Whoa. And that's really hard to dock and maneuver when the winds are pushing against everything that you are trying to do. I have faith in Captain Sandy and Malia's ability to maneuver that fucking boat. Even though, um, like, the captain's, like, perch or whatever the hell it's called is really, really inconveniently placed. Rob is definitely deep. He's got a couple different layers. Jess is deep, probably in places, yeah, but. <laughs> I meant in her heart. <laughs> ah, oh 
my god, that was the funniest thing I heard all episode, and um, she's not wrong. I can't really tell how Hannah is feeling about bugs coming. You are driven by heart, you're driven by your talent, and you're driven by your instinct. <laughs> Just kidding. Things are gonna change. Yo, Malia's sense of humor this season is so fun. Oh my goodness, she's gonna be the comic relief, I hope. Because the things she's been saying, man, they make me laugh. Lead deckhand Peter. Holding kids is super special. My son was born, and two weeks later I was diagnosed with bacterial meningitis, and I was hospitalized for six weeks. I couldn't hold him, see him, touch him, because I was so contagious. First time I got to hold him, I was so skinny, um, and he was, he was just this little alien baby. <laughs> I was like, this is my guy. He's a guy. I'm not the guy that comes off as a father. You know, I'm still Pete, but put my son in front of my face, and I'm a completely different person. For the sake of his child, I really hope he does become a different person because right now, the person he is, is a misogynistic, racist piece of shit. And I refuse to ever talk about him again on my videos. I'm just going to skip over him because he is not the type of guy I want to feature on my channel, especially in these times. If you go and see his post that he was fired over, you'll understand why. But I refuse to put it on here because I don't want to show that hate. Duckhand, Alex. Pete is one of the first people I met on the boat. We vibe off the bat, but I don't like the shit talk. Like, I'm not going to bash her with you. I'm going to be friends with both people. That's who I am. It's interesting that all the deck crew thinks that Peter is kind of a shit face. Um, it, it's great to see that all those people have a good charge of character and that they all realize that Peter is an asshat. So... Go deck team, right? Pete and I, we're trying to find ourselves some mamacitas. No, no, it's Spanish style. Like, just keep it. All right, just kiss her. The only Spanish I know, te amo mucho, mucho, mami. I think, I think that's, I love you very much, mom. Alex seems like an all-around kind of good guy. He respects women. He obviously does because he told us about his mother and his upbringing. And he isn't really disgusting trying to pick up women, which is nice. She won't. Jess is my girl. We work together, and I've never seen her hook up with a crew member before. But Rob and Jess are both good-looking people. <laughs> I know Rob has a girlfriend, so I think he's respectful enough to not cross that line, but we'll see. Time will tell. Unfortunately, my dude, you are wrong on that account. He does cross that line, and they do hook up. Um, and apparently not just one time. I think it's, like, multiple times by the looks of it. So... Alex is not that great a judge of character of Jess, I guess. Deckhand Robert. That was basically a meeting about Pete. Who the f saying sweetie? Nobody. Calling Emily a sweetheart. It's not a good thing to do, bro. He is so narrow minded. It's nice to see that even Robert, like the little zombie boy, understands that Pete is such a dill hole. I'm currently seeing someone that's open relationship, but I flirt with Jess. Is it stressing you out? Somewhat. It is. <laughs> but there's always that thing in the back of your mind, don't screw the crew. Don't sh where you eat. That's like really far back to the right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the more little side interviews, the more, like, I guess he is attractive. He has, like, this attitude that's really aloof and like kind of sexy and then when he talks he's kind of sexy but most of the time I just think he looks like a zombie. I didn't expect this to happen at all. I have not hooked up with anyone on a vessel before. I'm not sure what to do. I think the first thing you should do is tell your girlfriend that you hooked up with someone on your crew. I think that's the first thing you gotta do buddy. My peak and pit of the episode. The peak of the episode for me was Hannah taking an online leadership class to hopefully be a better leader to Bugsy this time around. This is a class for those who want to understand the experiences that have helped me become an effective leader. It's 
it's really, really important to surround yourself with a team whose opinions that you trust, and you have to listen. The pit of the episode for me was realizing Peter's lack of self-awareness during the deck crew meeting. Well, you know who's calling me, sweetie, right? No. You don't know? No. Pete, did I? Yes. Are you serious? Dead serious. Watch out, sweetheart. I checked, sweetheart. Right here, sweetheart. You got enough for him, sweetheart? No problem, sweetheart. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, you call me sweetie or sweetheart, like every day. I guess it was just the way I was raised. I'm a little country boy from Virginia. Girls don't love to be called sweetie all day, especially when I'm your boss. Got it, 100%. Cool. My predictions for the season? Two predictions down, seven to go. What are your predictions? Please comment them down below. Yadi of the episode goes to Malia. She continually proves her knowledge and skill level as Bosun every episode. Docking in big swells, it's pretty dangerous, but Malia did an amazing job calling it. She is a great leader already. Land lover of the episode goes to Jessica and Robert's relationship. And I put relationship in quotes. I think it's going to be a shitstorm, and we're just along for the ride, guys. Let's see where it goes, huh? Have you seen Rob this morning? <laughs> yes, when I woke up. <laughs> Honey. Rob, how was your night? I was good. Had a cuddle. That's good. Everybody likes cuddles. I don't even know how big it is. Didn't, like, feel it? No. And you were in the same bunk? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably not a good sign then, huh? <laughs> The scuttlebutt of the episode is, well, next week could either be explosive or oddly quiet and somber and stressless. But with Bugsy and Hannah, I really don't think it's going to be the fluffy bunny time. And we hope, I think it's going to be a little explosive until they get their bearings because they ended on quite a terrible day terrible note the last time they worked together. Hello. I'm Bugs. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm feeling a little bit apprehensive about Bugs. Lovely to see you. I'll give me a hug. Will I trust her? No. Are we going to be friends? No. This is going to be your job. Yay. I hate table decor. Are we going to work together? Yes. Jipwreck of the episode goes to the Ace of Base guy. Jesus. If they could be any more desperate for relevancy in the music industry right now, I don't know how they could be. It's, it, it's painful. It's been so embarrassing and painful to watch these people name drop and try and prove that they're still relevant. And I'm sorry to say, but they're not. You and your friend you started writing songs in the garage, basically. So how did you go from that to, like, the number one band in the world? You know, obviously you're very naive. We signed with the Swedish record company that they had no clue what to do with us. Mm -hmm. Pop, we did reggae, we did techno, we did house. We had no money. Put it on the American version of the name and size, sold 25 million up. And then the second wave is, of course, the ones who were inspired by that wave. And Katy Perry and, and uh, Lady Gaga. Episode rating of the week is, I rate this episode a 7. It was great, it was alright, you know, nothing to write home about. Kind of a transitional episode. I think it'll be more interesting next week when we see Bugsy and Hannah and how they're going to interact and communicate. Next week on Below Deck Med. Next on Below Deck Med. It's best to bring additional guests back to the yacht for late night drinks. Make everyone some rosé. Yay! Yay! Hello. I'm Bugs. How are you doing? Nice to meet you. I'm feeling 
a little bit apprehensive about bugs. Lovely to see you. I'll give you a hug. Will I trust her? No. Are we going to be friends? No. This is going to be your job. Yay! I hate table decor. Are we going to work together? Yes. I'm laying on this boat because you released the wrong ground line. Yeah, I'm just going to put your port ground line that's very important back on. Your sarcasm on the radio did not escape me. Hold on, what happened to the oysters we ordered? I guess you guys didn't read it correctly, but... There's a big difference between being demanding and just being an outright asshole. Okay? Short crew, short crew. You need to take everything down immediately. It just goes from bad to worse. Kiko, Hannah? We're going to have 12 guests for dinner tonight. For six course, 12 guests. Six times 12 is 72, right? I'm <laughs> For more Below Deck Mag, go to bravotv.com. Well, that's the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope that you guys stick around and we see what happens next week with either the blowout or the reconciliation of Bugsy and Hannah. All right, guys. Have a good week. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give a like, comment, subscribe and share and try not to screw the push this week okay